routine of winter work that we do every winter and most of the spring and part of the spring. So getting back into that cycle, I was not able to make it to the meeting, but it definitely looked like y'all are trying to do some great things revolving around the climate and particularly around here in Durham. But I'm sure that you're also going to be in touch with people like AOC and others around the country. So it is a part of this global movement and everything, but tell us a little bit about the meeting, what the meeting was about and um, how that might even play in your school board run. Oh, definitely. I mean, I was uh, super grateful that we had great turnout we had people coming out and just expressing, you know, their take on, on what are the issues that we need to be fighting for or issues that we need to come together around. You know, like um, one of the things was transportation. You know, we had uh, the city and county um, and many constituents in Durham had, had ideas about the light rail project. And now that that's not, that, you know, that's not happening, then what do we do about transportation? What are some of the ways? So, um, you know, there, there were folks who came out there because that, that was their thing. They wanted to talk about transportation. You know, we have the affordable housing crisis. Um, we have, like, the McDougal Terrace situation with sewage behind the buildings. We have um, carbon monoxide. Um, we have, like, an infestation of, of, of roaches and, and, um, and also just, just lack of repair, of the neglect and, and lack of repair of public housing facilities. And so one of the things is, like, how um, can we ensure that, that, that we are advocating and that we are not – leaving people out when we're talking about environmental racism that's that's environmental racism when you have sewage you have sanitation that is not being um you know uh unsanitary uh living conditions you know it's environmental racism when there's neglect and so some of these topics and when we hear about what's happening in other places it's happening here in durham so there are a lot of folks who were there looking at public housing and looking at ways that our group can work towards that and so um Many, 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 many thoughts, many great ideas. The, the best ideas come from directly affected folks. Um, you know, there's also people who care and people who are allies. And what we've seen with, with McDougal Terrace is that a lot of people have volunteered and they've stepped up, stepped up to, to provide um, support. So this is, this is a way to kind of break away from the silos. This is a way for, you know, just building on what you were talking about, the article, people who are isolated. You know, we should be really intentional about ensuring that we are not isolating any community any family or, or any individual at whatever level, you know, if there's any group that is not at the table, we need to start looking at who's not at the table. And that was something that we asked tonight. We're like, you know, we want to make sure that the people who are showing up to talk about climate change, environmental racism, that we are, you know, including as many voices. And the room had good representation and we had a good start. And this is just the beginning. So we're going to continue to work to amplify voices. We're going to continue to offer, you know, the invitation and put it out for community members to speak on what environmental racism looks like to them. You know, what does it look like if you live in East Durham? What, what are some of the concerns that are happening in East Durham? You know, what are the concerns that are happening uh, in, different, in different neighborhoods? You know, what does it look like in public housing? What does it look for, like in, um, you know, the, 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 the Fayetteville Street Corridor and, and many other places, you know? So these are conversations that, are, that need to be community-driven. Um, these are conversations you need to be having. Um, another topic that was there was one that is with schools and how to, how to have energy efficient um, solar panels, uh, you know, schools, schools that are energy efficient and have solar panels. So the, for the first part, you know, just realizing that our school district is not energy efficient at all. You know, um, knowing that we don't have adequate staffing, that it, it has been almost going on two years that we have not had uh, an energy sustainability coordinator, which we used to have. And that there's nobody looking at, you know, what our use or you know, energy use is. I know there was like uh, changes in some schools where they were putting lighting. They were moving into LED lights. But those projects, I mean, what is what is the current state of those projects? And what is the, what is an energy audit? Where are those energy audits for, you know, the, the expenditures that um, are happening at each uh, at the building level? So lots of questions as to, you know, are we are we doing the necessary uh, due diligence to find research? on best practices, are we tapping into things that have worked even with our neighbors? We, so somebody was mentioning that Orange County has, you know, a good reports that they put out about, about how their uh, schools are, are on track for energy and sustainability uh, goals. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's worth us looking into these things. It's worth us also ensuring that our kids are not in trailers. You know, it's like we have kids that are in trailers. So as we look at the redistricting, we're looking at so many of these different decisions that the school board is, 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 is going to be looking at. I mean, we need to take all these considerations um, into account. We need to look at, um, we, we need to look at, uh, at, at, 
you know, some some of these efforts to to reduce waste and plastic and use of plastic um, in our schools. I know that there, uh, don't waste Durham and um, has come to a couple of schools through PTAs and partnerships with the PTAs. Um, I was actually at Club Boulevard when our PTA was talking about it, and I was super enthused about it. And I went to a Don't Waste Durham meeting um, and was super grateful that that um, that this partnership could happen. And what it was was that as kids were eating their lunches. You know, we were starting to sort the trash, and we we're letting the kids know this is compostable. So if, if it's you know, if it's if it's uh, food items, they go here. If, you know, if it's you know, uh, utensils go here. And we were just you know teaching kids and modeling for kids what it means to to, to be environmentally uh, conscious and aware, um, and explaining a little bit about the composting. So um, parents could come in during the lunchtime. Um, some parents were coming in, and, and some 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 parents were like, "This is a good opportunity to make sure your kids." You know, the kids are actually eating, you know, that they were, they were just so, so much concerned for all the oranges that get thrown in the garbage can, you know, that just go in there, the whole pile, like the whole tray kind of goes in there with all the oranges and all the things that it's like, you know, there's a mom who's like, this is, this is good to kind of be in here and to kind of see what's happening. Um, so, so many opportunities for people to get involved. The grandparents, you know, we, somebody in the group is talking about, you know, the things that grandparents can do because parents are working. But that doesn't preclude other family members from joining and, and volunteering. So there's so many opportunities, Mark. There's so many opportunities. Yeah. Um, I'm super grateful for this meeting and, and for, you know, the energy that everybody brought to the meeting and, and the ideas, the creative ideas that we're going to be building on. One of the things that I know people were really impressed by, particularly with your campaign, and I think it was one or two other campaigns, is there's all the talk all the time here in Durham about the various political action campaigns, the political action committees, and how they're sometimes – at the head of each other or at the throat of each other. But in your case, the two that are, I guess, the primary ones that are not, don't always necessarily see eye to eye have both endorsed you. So you got the endorsement of both the Derm Affairs and the People's Alliance. So I've noted that probably was something that was exciting to you and everything was that you got not just the endorsement of one of these powerful committees, but both of them, and that they both saw the merits of your campaign. I am super grateful. I'm, I'm telling you, Durham Committee and the Affairs of Black People, People's Alliance, um, you know, it, it just means a lot to me that, you know, that, that, that that's Durham. You know, it's like the people of Durham um, have uh, have given me their vote of confidence in these endorsement meetings. So I'm, I'm super, super grateful for that and, and just, like I said, energize and, and, and continue to have these conversations, you know, because I realize that this is, this is a race. You know, we have candidates. Everybody has their own merit, you know, and the thing is these conversations that we need to have about what, what each of us, you know, brings. And, and for me, it's, it's very clear. I've been, you know, I'm a, I'm a part of this community. Um, you know, my, 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 my connections, my network, my family, you know, it's like, you know, where I've been, the experiences that have shaped me are very, you know, they're, it's Durham. You know, it's a, there's, there's a whole lot in here about being somebody who, who graduated from, from, from Hillside High School here. And knowing that in the 90s, late 90s, what, what that was like, you know, I, there weren't that many Latino students in, in Hillside at that time. And I just, you know, do remember, you know, uh, starting with, 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 with my family coming in here and opening a church, you know, in 98, like opening a church and, um, and you know, getting lost and, and coming up and, and, and seeing a reverend, seeing a, 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 a lady preacher who was like, you know, super nice to us and, and, and welcomed us into her church uh, home. And said, you know, you can come and have meetings here. You can you can have church in, in my church, you know, and open her doors to us. And it's just these stories of, you know, for for me to come in and get the endorsement of the Durham Community in the Affairs of Black People, it's, it's knowing that all along the way people have been opening doors for me, um, that Durham has, has, has given me so much and that I have so much um, in, in terms of, like, commitment and in terms of, of desire and in terms of, uh, you know, just, just, just uh, experience, you know, experience here in, in the city. Um, that I, I bring all that. I'm, I'm bringing all, all of that into into whatever role. Um, and in this yeah. case, I am going for the school board seat. And what do you think will be your primary issues that you'll be trying to focus on in the school board race if you had to say one or two issues that will be your primary issues that you want to focus on? Because every camp- candidate and every campaign has certain things that they want to focus on. My platform is DPS. It's DPS, so Dismantling the School to Prison Pipeline all the pipelines in whatever ways we are disenfranchising our youth, you know, so uh, prioritizing equity and wellness. I want, you know, what, what does wellness look like for teachers? What does wellness look like for students? What does it mean for people with disabilities? You know, wellness, you know, um, equity. We need to make sure that equity is, is at every level 
um, whether it's advanced placement courses, you know, opportunities for uh, immersion in science or, you know, what STEM, which is something that is also near dear to my heart. I want to make sure that equity is centered every step of the way in every single process that we have. And then supporting marginalized communities. I think that, you know, just we have, we, we, we want to fight against those silos, you know, and, and when you were mentioning people who feel isolated, a lot of our marginalized communities, you can tell who's marginalized by the isolation. So, you know, we have so many Latino parents who feel isolated from the school buildings. You know, they come into the school buildings, they drop off their kids, they're not a part of the community in that school. You know, they're not having the conversations with the teachers, they're not having that. We have a lot of black families who don't feel welcome in certain buildings. You know, they feel like they're, they're, they're marginalized, they feel like they're not you know, at the center of the processes and decision-making that is happening at the schools. We have people, you know, teachers that don't disclose their disabilities because they feel like that's going to lead to, 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 to more problems than they want to deal with. And so for me, it's, it's supporting so that we don't have any silos, so we don't have anybody feeling isolated. So when you were mentioning that article, it really rung true because part of the thing is that we're in this together and we say it, but we need to make sure we show it and we, we implement processes that reduce you know, and, 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 and mitigate against these, these uh, dynamics where we push people out, where we disenfranchise folks, where our own youth are being sent to alternative schools and, and you know, we're not supporting them in their learning and in, in, in their growth. So that's my platform. Yeah, because yes. yeah, it's really interesting because a lot of times people forget how many silos there are. We've talked about this before, even within the different communities. Like, you know, there's the black middle class and the uh, – black lower class and the uh, black wealthy. And there's the definitely the whole light and dark thing that still exists even in the 21st century and everything. And then there's different other kinds of ways that we divide ourselves. And people also try to do the same thing with the Latin community where they try to put all of y'all in one boat knowing good and well that there, I don't even know if you count Central America, how many countries there are, but there's at least, I would think 20 or 25, if not more. Because like I said, I haven't done the count, but I know it's a, I know it's a bunch. Well, you know, that, that's the thing. It's like, you know, when we start having conversations with each other, we realize our differences and we realize, like, you know, our perspectives that, you know, and how those are, are shaped differently. It's very different for somebody. Like, for me, like, I, I came to the States when I was five years old. I have the immigrant journey. I walk through deserts, you know. I know what it is like to jump a fence, you know, and it's like that is that is a, a very different thing. It's, and you, you, we talk about trauma in our kids. We talk about, you know, what trauma looks like. And for many kids living, in, in like, in the midst of community violence, you know, it's like for a lot of families who come from Central America where we've had climate change affecting, flooding our lands, you know, um, not, not being able to, 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 to thrive and not being able to live, and you're, and you're fighting for your own life. So, you know, there's all these perspectives of what everybody brings. It's not the same thing as somebody who comes from a, 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 a you know, social class and, you know, gets on a plane and has a, a different entry into this country. And even that, that reception and that uh, receptivity or welcome is very different. So it's, 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 it's the, the policies that we talk about when, uh, you know, we have people in Florida that are voting one way, and their journeys have been maybe a little different. You know, there was like, you know, dry foot, wet foot policies that enabled many people who were immigrants to come in and have housing and have, you know, the supports they needed, but that was not afforded to people coming in through the, through the border, right? So, so many different questions about, like, what those experiences have been. But the reality is that we are different, that we may have different backgrounds, we may have different origin stories, we may have different journeys, but there are, there's something very central to things here in Durham. And the thing that is very central and unifying is that we, we see what's, what's happening. We see what's happening with our youth. We see what's happening with our workforce. We see what's happening with our crime rates. We see what is happening in our communities in terms of safety and, you know, um, just, you know, civilization and, and, and opportunity. So because we know that these dynamics are happening, regardless of your background, regardless of whether you have, you know, uh, you know, uh, you're a second generation, third generation college student or you're first generation, you know, uh, you're an English learner, regardless of these things, we, we know what safety means. We know what um, opportunity means. And so can we work together to ensure that we are doing the best for all our kids? Can we, can we, can we ensure that, you know, can we talk to each other and, and figure out, like, for different perspectives? So I, I like I like the movements that are bringing black and brown folks together to talk about like the fact that uh, I saw a post from um, you know a, a, a journalist and he he was talking about the journeys I mean this is Carl Kenny he said you know he said one of his things is that he he tells you know black families and Latino families like to understand each other's journey for for Latino families who have had to flee 
fully up north, you know, for, for to, 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 to be able to live, to survive, you know, and, 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 you know, knowing that they're leaving behind, 